What's up guys, it's David with How to Beast, and in this video I want to discuss pornography, specifically internet pornography, and why it's fucking terrible. It's a fucking disaster, it can ruin your life, it can kill your confidence, it can give you sexual dysfunctions, it can, I don't know, it's just bad man, it's just bad. So I want to review like the five main costs of watching internet pornography, at least from my perspective and then I also want to review a quick step-by-step -step, or a quick set of techniques that you can use to help you kick pornography if it's something that you struggle with if it's something you become addicted to and it is something that you can become addicted to you know they've done studies on this and it it triggers a cycle a cycle of reward in your brain where you get that release you get that orgasm for masturbating and it's like when it's like you're subconsciously training yourself to get that release or to get that prize the same way drug addicts fiend a high and it's bad because of that it can really cripple you so the first cost i want to talk about is that it reduces your motivation to go out and meet and date real women if you get into the habit of coming home every day from work or from school and just jerking one out then that sort of becomes your your sexual release and then when that is your sexual release, what is the fucking point of going out and finding a partner to have sex with? Two is erectile dysfunction. Guys who train themselves, who do this, they train themselves subconsciously to trigger getting aroused and, you know, getting an erection and maintaining an erection to watching other people have sex on the screen or watching a certain type of girl have sex on the screen. And so when they're with an actual girl who wants to have sex with them, it's not uncommon for guys to report having erectile dysfunction and not being able to get hard, not being able to get that wood because they're so fucked up about it. You know, they're so backwards. They've trained themselves backwards. And then when you get in your head about that and you're like, oh, fuck, am I going to get hard? Am I not going to get hard? Oh, I'm not getting hard. Then once it's you're in your head about it, game over. You ain't getting hard, son. Number three, and this sort of ties into number two, it's unrealistic sexual expectations you see porn and you know it's like a movie granted they, they're using cool camera angles they have good lighting these people are wearing crazy sexy costumes the women have huge fake boobs huge fake asses and you start to see sex as this fantasy and real sex isn't like that and that's not to say real sex isn't good real sex is better than porn but instead of valuing things like the touch of a woman or the actual feeling of being inside of her you start to value this bullshit that you see in porn. As a side note to that, it's also been studied that guys get increasingly perverted tastes, or that guys can get increasingly perverted tastes as they watch a lot of porn. Meaning that, you know, you go on from regular porn to porn where they're just like, the girls just getting smacked around, to porn where there's like gang bangs, to, to like rape porn and stuff that gets really fucked up. But it's, it's the same type of spiral that happens that, you know, you just need more and more like crazy shit to get aroused. And that's another big risk. And it's also going to make you a fucking pervert. Number four, shame spiraling. This is when you know that watching porn is a bad thing or that you know that it kind of affects you badly or you know it's a bad habit or it's something that you're ashamed of. And when you do it, it makes you feel guilty or shameful. And that's just going to eat away at you. It's going to eat away your self-esteem. It's going to eat away your social confidence. And it's just going to turn you into a fucked up person who's really unhappy with themselves. Now, if you're someone who watches porn, you're like completely cool with it. And you're like, you don't, you know, you're not embarrassed about it. You know, you tell your, your, your friends or your girlfriend, you're open about it. It's not something you try and hide. I'm not saying you fucking like broadcast yourself jerking off to porn. But you know, you're, you're not, you don't have any shame associated with that then it's not it's not as bad because this you're not going to suffer this cost the other costs are still possible though so i'm not saying you know if you're cool with porn then just keep doing it but it's going to help you avoid this cost the fifth and final cost i'm going to talk with you today is that it can lead you to putting women and the act of sex on a pedestal so when it's something that you watch on a screen and it's not something that you do and you know you you get into that habit of watching porn to get that release it can make sex seem like a fucking fantasy as we talked about and while that can make it harder to have good sex and you're actually having sex, 
It can also lead you to putting the act of sex and the act of dating a real woman on a pedestal. It can make it seem like a fantasy and that can make you set these limiting beliefs that you know you're not worthy of real women or you're not worthy of having sex. It's just something you go home and fucking lock yourself in your room and watch on a screen. And that's fucked up. All right. Now that we covered the costs of porn addiction and watching a lot of porn, I'm going to talk about five techniques that you can, in fact, use to help kick that habit. The first one's uh, a technique anyone can use to try and adopt any habit or if they're trying to kick any habit. And that's to you change your identity. You change the way you look at yourself in relation to that habit. So the, the, typical, exempl- the typical example of this is someone who goes to the gym or someone who wants to go to the gym, but they're struggling. They can't build that habit of going to the gym. And what they do is they don't build that habit until they change how they see themselves. So then until they start to see themselves as an athletic person who goes to the gym, they don't do it. But there's this, there's this tendency of people who go out and buy a lot of clothing. You know, they go, they go buy a lot of Nike, a lot of Lululemon, a lot of Under Armour clothing. They go and buy all this gym clothes. All of a sudden, they start going to the gym. And part of that could be, yeah, they just invested money into going to the gym. They feel bad. But a lot of it is that, you know, when they throw this clothes on, they look at themselves like, oh, I'm, I am that type of person that goes to the gym. I'm not that fat shit on the sofa watching TV. And then they go to the gym. So the same way you do that, you kind of can do that with internet pornography. It's a little bit trickier. But you can start to think of yourself as someone who has sex with real women. You know, you're not someone who goes and watches other people have sex on the screen. You know, you start to see that as sort of childish behavior or as something you did back in your your adolescence, something you used to do in the past. And if you can do that, it kind of changes how you look at porn. It's like, oh, that's something I used to do. Yeah, that's something I used to fuck with, but I'm over that now. Number two is to masturbate without porn. And in the online circles of, you know, no fap or, or kicking the ad- addiction of porn, there is this test they call. I forget what it's called, but it's more or less the test to see if you're addicted to porn. And the test is to try and masturbate without porn. And if you masturbate without porn, you can still get an erection, you know, and still get yourself to orgasm without, you know, viciously jerking it. It's fuck, as weird as that is for me to say to the camera. But if you can do that, then you pass the test. If not, you fail the test and you've sort of become reliant on porn to get aroused. But, you know, you can still get that same sexual release from masturbating and using your imagination or just being present and just, you know, enjoying how it feels to masturbate. Again, this feels really weird for me to talk to on YouTube, but it's true. You know, you can sidestep the benefits or the costs of watching porn by just masturbating without pornography. You can still masturbate and jerk it. You know, if you have that urge, you don't actually have to watch them do it on the screen. Number three is to replace it with another habit. So if you're getting that urge to watch porn, you have to tell yourself, no, you know, I'm not going to watch porn. I'm going to go meditate now. I think that'd be a perfect one. But it could be, I'm going to go read now. It could be, I'm going to go for a run now. I'm going to go to the gym now. But when you replace it with another habit, you start to train yourself when you get the urge to go do something else instead. And that makes the difference. You know, the main thing being you want to replace it with a habit that's away from your computer. You know, if you say, oh, I'm just going to do my email instead, you know, porn is still just a click away. If you don't actually change the environment that you're in with this habit, it's not likely going to be as effective as if you go outside for a run. You know, you can't, unless you're fucking going to pull out your smartphone on the run, you know, be jogging and just jerking it while you're jogging down the street. A, that would be impressive. B, it's not going to happen. Number four, don't beat yourself up when you relapse. And this is a key to kicking any bad habit. You should always try and quit a bad habit, cold turkey, in my opinion, you shouldn't plan, well, I'm going to just masturbate once every three weeks now. You know, that's just way better than masturbating once every three hours. You shouldn't do that. Because that's just going to give yourself permission to fuck up. But you do have to, when you do fuck up, when you do relapse, you know, if you're somebody smoking or someone who doesn't want to eat late at night or you're trying to, you know, not eat junk food, when you do relapse, I should say if you do relapse and when you do relapse, you know, be easy with yourself. Accept that it happened but don't beat yourself up because that just feeds into that shame spiraling where you're going to start to hate yourself because you fucked up. You sort of have to accept it and move on and say, you know, I'm going to learn from this mistake. Next time I get the urge, instead of doing my email, I'm going to get the fuck out of the house or go, you know, call my buddy up and talk to him instead. Number five and my last tip for trying to kick the habit of internet pornography is just to remind yourself of the consequences. Remind yourself of the cost, you know, shit, this could lead me to erectile dysfunction. This might be keeping me from meeting other women. 
this is, you know, this is kind of the sick habit that, I, that I've chosen to kick. And if you just remind yourself of those sometimes, you can use your logical brain to convince yourself not to do it. Now, I don't think this tip is as effective as changing your environment or doing something else instead. But for some types of guys who are more analytical and more logical in the way they think things through, this might actually work quite well. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Stop watching internet pornography. It's only going to fuck with you. Stay beastly.